Hi everyone, welcome to Hugh Spotlight. We are so happy because we get an opportunity to bring to you or to show you or to hear some brand new music from some incredible talent across Canada. And so we go to, I guess, the East Coast. Uh, she's a wonder kind. She's a multi-instrumentalist. -inst she's a composer, producer. She writes and I think she's actually getting into singing too. She's a TikTok sensation. Well, you would think that she'd be a seasoned musician. No, she's just a teenager, 18, <laughs> whatever. Anyways, we are so happy to have Mary Frances Leahy on Hugh Spotlight. Welcome, Mary Frances. I mean, I have to say it because, girl, you are amazing. But you, get, you hear that so often. Um, but I'm pretty sure you're grounded too as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Oh, uh, anyways, okay. Debut album, First Light, uh, yeah. an amazing uh, album. I'm curious, your passion for Latin music. Okay, you play the fiddle, you play piano, mm -hmm. uh, you have all that Celtic background, but the Latin yeah. music. How did that come into your life? I have no idea. My So I have no reason to have heard or experienced Latin music. And three, two or three years ago, probably three now, in COVID, during the pandemic, my brother was playing a Mark Anthony pop song, but it was like, had kind of that salsa crossover. And so it was more um, understandable for me because it had the pop element. And I was like, oh my goodness. And it became my favorite song. And I got into Mark Anthony. And then I got into his more traditional stuff. And then I got into like Latin extreme world. And I just love it. Literally, like getting ready for this interview, I had it on in the, in the bathroom, like doing my hair. So I don't know why I love it or... I mean, I, it's amazing music, but I don't know why it speaks to me so much or why I resonate with it because it's nowhere in my heritage that I know of. But <laughs> yes, yeah, cool. Well, and speaking of heritage, you come to music, I guess, through family with two famous parents, Natalie McMaster and Danelle Leahy. You've been performing since you were a little girl. Yeah. So where you are now, uh, Mary Frances, did you ever think that this would be your life? No. Um, obviously, I always thought music would be a part of my life, but not my life, if that makes sense. And I think, I I think it was expected of me to have like a career, or I thought it was expected of me, not by my parents, but of other people. So I never, I thought I was going to be a teacher up until like a couple of years ago. And then when I heard Latin music and I started writing, I felt like I had something different to say that wasn't like a repeat. And then you choose it for yourself and and it becomes more of a passion, um, I think. So no, I did not intend on this, but here we are. <laughs> oh, so do you find it hard though to carve your own persona, your own stamp on music, or is it easy? Um, elements of it are easy. What I like and when I write music, it's very much for myself. It's very much like, well, this is what I like and I hope other people like it, but if they don't, it's still what I like, you know, kind of thing. Um, and definitely writing the music for the album was very much easy for me in that it just came and it's, it's very much me. What I find difficult is, you know, I come from a musical background and a musical family and I love that and I want to keep that a part of what I do but you're also trying to say like by the way I'm someone else like I am my own voice um, and my own person so that part is hard like you said kind of trying to carve out and be like I'm just I'm different like you know what I mean and I think once people see the show or they see it they listen to the music I think it's different like people are saying oh you're so you're totally a different thing but before that it's getting them to that point or getting them to you know what I mean so yeah it's there's parts of it that come very easily and other parts that are a little more challenging 
Well, I mean, and we have to see you live, really, to really appreciate the true passion that you have with the fiddle. Uh, yeah. You know, we kind of think of the fiddle as either, pardon me, but country hoedown yeah. or, or, you know, the yeah, beautiful yeah. music that your mom plays, you know. Yeah. But you just bring a, like a whole different twist to it. And mm -hmm. so for you now, I mean, as such a young person, though very seasoned, so mm -hmm. you have high standards, mm -hmm. how was like the whole process of producing your own album though with other you know other help other artists other musicians mm. and all of that it's very interesting and i learned and i'm still learning so much because like you said i'm very young and in some ways i'm experienced like i've done a lot of different shows and traveled but in other ways like recording and being in the studio is pretty new for me so trying to get it's one thing to be in the moment and really feeling where you're at and present when you're playing like in your bedroom practicing or whatever but when you're on stage or especially when you're in the studio trying to get your brain and your focus in that moment and be present in what you're playing rather than thinking what is the engineer thinking and what if I hit a bad note and what if I trying to detach yourself from that to me is really in uh, really difficult and a different part that comes with the recording um, and the hardest part probably working with other people is just in my youth I'm self-conscious I'm like oh I'm gonna hit a bad note or what are they gonna think and once you can and I've done it, I'm learning how to do it. Once you can tap out of that and just get really into what you're doing is kind of when the magic happens for me. Yes, yeah. well, certainly. Practice, you mentioned that word. Mm -hmm. I would think that you're continually practicing, continually learning. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so how do you keep up with all of the instruments, piano, fiddle, and what have you? How do you keep on? Uh, working towards the future it is hard once you have any amount okay when you when you can't reach something or you can't touch it there's a huge incentive to work for it and then once you get a little taste of it once you have the album done or once you get some gigs or whatever you have to I have to keep myself motivated to practice and say well no I'm not satisfied with this yet I want to keep going so that I'm pretty self-motivated so that part is okay traveling and practicing is hard for me um, and just to get the practice time in and to get the focus in I do find that difficult when I'm home I'll get in a good zone and I'll go for it but something that is is um it sounds like it would be a good thing but sometimes it's a bad thing is I keep liking new instruments and I don't want to be like a jack of all trades and a master of none right so my mom got a double bass for like a stand-up bass for my sister Claire last year and Claire did not like it and I loved it and I would just play and so she got rid of it because she's like my Francis you gotta like focus on your thing you know what I mean <laughs> and I have congas for Christmas behind me there I got congas and I'm just in here like trying to learn how to play the congas and I'm like I need to focus on my yeah, we need to, I want to get really good at a few things. So the, my trouble is like spreading myself too thin and loving too many things, which I guess is not a huge problem, but yeah. <laughs> well, you could have, you could be a one man or one woman band. See, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, just say, mom, you got it all wrong, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, okay, and let's talk about family. Like mm -hmm. you are the oldest of seven kids. Yes. Now are all of you musically? In, musically inclined or all different? Yeah, yeah, as my dad says, we are genetically forced. He says we're genetically forced to play. <laughs> so, yeah, for sure, it's like growing up, they make us play music because they know it's good for us, just like they make you go to school or they make mm -hmm. you eat certain foods or, you know, and we they are very much like 
they want us to do whatever we want to do in mm -hmm. life, like career wise, but we all play, we all play the fiddle to start. Everybody dances, everybody plays the piano. And then aside from that, there are some vocals, some bass, accordion, guitar, kind of thing going on so yes it's it's insane you know the house can get pretty loud we live in a big house but still <laughs> it can get pretty <laughs> loud but it's good is there any pressure then on you as being the oldest and obviously being multi-talented and mm -hmm. embarking on a music career is the pressure on you to be as famous as your parents or not I would say for me, what I feel is the pressure to be as good as them. And I, I mean, you want fame, I guess that comes with success and that is a good thing. But more than that, I really want to feel in myself that I'm really good. And even if I think I'd prefer that with no fame rather than fame in an empty sense of what I am so I think definitely there's pressure um but more so I want myself and I'm my hardest critic so I want myself to believe that I got to where they are or beyond and I hope that day will come but I don't know if I'll ever <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever see myself as like better than them you know I think pretty highly well, of them you never know but never now know. of course social media plays a yeah. huge part it does, and it, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter whether you're a musician or an actor or or whatever. Yeah. How do you navigate social media? I don't. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess I do, but I feel like I don't. I have, I just got social media accounts, like, two months ago. I think I have never had. I mean, I had social media when I was maybe 14 and then I deleted it because it was negatively affecting people around me and I didn't want to, um, I don't know, I just distanced myself. And then the album's coming out and everyone's like, you really have to get on that. Like, so I delayed it and delayed it and delayed it. And the day before my first single came out, I got Instagram and TikTok and um, different accounts. And honestly, it was a huge, and it is like a huge <laughs> learning curve. And I don't feel like inside, I feel very shy. And that might not come across on stage because you, you've learned to be like, hey, look at me. But the whole social media thing is not natural for me. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to adapt and ironically, like the TikTok kind of exploded. So I'm like, I must be, doing, I don't know, I must be doing <laughs> something right. But I don't, I'm really just trying to like roll with the punches and just figure it out along the way because I'm, um, it's not naturally me inside, I guess. No, and then when you get that negative comment. Mm. Yeah, like I posted the TikTok that went viral with my dad playing the bow for me. The No, yeah, playing the bow for me and I was playing the fiddle. The comments, like I stopped reading them. But the comments were like, what a creep, what a like, I was like, oh my gosh, I must have typed, that is my dad, excuse me, like <laughs> 10 times. And then I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to. But yeah. no, th there's very positive ones as well. I think just not looking at them mm -hmm. or ideally having someone do that for you, like maybe someday have someone take care of it so important stuff can get answered and then I, I don't have to worry about the rest. Yes, I don't know. that I think is a true answer. But anyways, mm -hmm. I mean, people just have to see you. You're, you're amazing. <laughs> uh, congratulations on the album. Again, it's a fusion of Celtic, Latin, pop, jazz. And I mean, I think it's, you're bringing a new sound and we all crave that. And oh, I, think I think that, you know, people are going to really embrace it. You just you know, have to be post maybe another TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's definitely a, a great tool. And yes. I've gotten a little taste like using it correctly is just amazing. And it's something that they didn't have in the music industry years yeah. ago, you know, when my mom and dad were starting. So I'm going to try and use it to my advantage. Yes. And you'll have plenty to do. You are embarking mm -hmm. on an incredible tour, which is, you know, coming up in like in 
a couple of weeks and yeah. you are you're gone so i mean yeah stay healthy you know but you. and enjoy i think that this is going to be like an, an amazing experience for you and you know okay. your first taste of mary francis Leahy, right mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm very excited oh we're so happy for you and you are going to play us something aren't you just to I show am. you just to show people a taste of your talent okay okay um i'm going to play a piece called the banks that my dad plays um it's a scottish traditional piece but he plays it in a not the traditional way so <laughs> Let me take, I don't know, he's the only one I've heard it play it like this. I'm going to take my ring off okay. um, and turn my sound on. You give me a little nod if this is, is this okay? Good. Okay, here we go with the banks. Thank you so much, Mary Frances Leahy. Thank She's you. coming to a town close to you. Congratulations. Her debut album, First Light. Thank you so much for joining us on Hugh Spotlight. Thank you for having me. Bye.